that hopefully over our, uh, our lunch and as we all fellowship, we can get a chance to share some of those stories about these Ba'a, but special individuals that came today that I want to give them, recognize them, and give them a chance to maybe share a few words. Uh, I'd like to bring up Uncle Nappy Napoleon. Yeah. Uncle Alex Uncle yeah. Uncle Pico. Uncle Bill. I called Uncle uh, Hardy Spore at about 10 a.m. yesterday morning because I totally forgot to invite them. And uh, I'm pretty impressed that in a matter of about 20 hours, we were able to have Uncle Nappy on a total last minute join us down here in Middle East. So this is very, very special. Many years ago, I started my canoe club down in Inui. I didn't have a poor canoe. At the boat house, they had the Malolo in the boat house. Had a few cracks, but nobody used the canoe anymore. So I was trying to find out who was in charge. Anyway, I met this Haramahai, who was in charge of the canoe. So I asked him if I could use the canoe for race. And the, the Malolo was a short canoe, and the other canoe was kind of high tech, 45 feet, 39 feet, 40. But anyway, I ended up using the canoe, me and my boys, my boys was about 10 years old, we went yeah. down the boat house, patched the canoe, Saturday we vanished them, Sunday we had them in the water, and the boat at the time weighed just under 400 pounds, oh. so we put some weight on them, found it. but anyway, a good story about, I think we won our old division, my kids, that's the first canoe they paddled in, they was only in the 12 and under, but they was like about 9, 10 years old. And they did good in the race. Awesome. The second awesome. My Thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo. All my life I've been with hell on it. Battling against Snappy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, beautiful now. The Malolo and the White Horse, they used to be the, the boats to be. Thank you for having me. Aloha. Mahalo. Mahalo. Long story, I'm making short. I remember this canoe when I was about 10, 12 years old. It was parked on our property on this big homemade ship. And every every evening when I could buy there, and I always go to the front and I did look at it and I tried to <laughs> I buy. Up. I buy. And a couple of years back there, then they came by and they, they took the canoe. So that's the last I ever seen of it. And then the, we are, when I paddled Hulinalo back in 55, but then we never raced in the Malolo. It's always used as a training boat between oh. Malolo and the White Horse. So they had a top crew senior and top crew junior. So we always had the grudge race, you know, three miles, up, down, up, down. And every time we get beat by half a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, 75, and they said, oh, so we'll make a Murukai canoe race. So they picked a the crew. And those years you only had, you start with six, six paddlers, you have three alternates, you make one change and then. So you start from Kauai Kui Bay, a short this mountain. So we okay, get out there. <coughs> then we get over there and go, look at it and say, where are we going to put the canoe at? It's no, no, no road, it's just trail. So the crew from Molokai, they had it on a flatbed truck. And the canoe were upside down, so everybody would down and help and carry it down, walk down the trail and to the sand beach. So then we reached the canoe out, and that evening we looked down, and the bay was just flat. Four o'clock in the morning, we hear this pounding surf. <laughs> we get up, the whole bay is covered in white water. Now you gotta get out. <laughs> so, what you gotta do, you gotta get out, you gotta take your tree alternates with you. But there's no escort boat to get you in there. Uh -huh. So what you do is, the outlet will sit behind the middle yako, and then when the back, out of the yako, and the back end of the canoe, and he's trying to scramble to get out of that, that bay. We made it okay. And I'm trying to remember, I think there were 12, 14 crews, but I remember they say that one didn't make it, that was called our focal. Trying to get off that last well, picked it up, backwards, on the beach, and split. And then, uh, I remember the old man said, Rabbit, you get, the beach by 12 o'clock. I got a steak dinner for you in the canoe club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we took off, and he, I guess, you know, John Dean knew some fishermen, and they knew the, the line up where to go and go, go here so far, go there so far. So we just took off. So we got in the cloak ahead, we about three miles ahead, and we made a the change there. And then we, the rabbit said, come on, come on, let's go. And then we were far ahead. We got on the beach, 1205, five minutes <laughs> off. So John Dean said, ah, okay, well, by the stake. The next year we're in again. And I, the last week, I came down like a flu. So I asked John, Dad, I don't want to start the race. I don't feel well. No, no, you start, you start. One hour in the race. My whole barrel, body is paralyzed. Can't even move my arm, nothing. <laughs> the rabbit, get me out of here. <laughs> so I got on a boat, escort boat. And Duke's, one of the Duke's brother was escort. And this boat was this old fashioned fishing boat. They'll chuck along, and I told them, you know, I ain't getting the motor price no more. They said, and I sat out for 20, 20 years, I sat out. Then, I work on the beach, and then Moku comes, hey, we need a steersman motor car race. When is it? Next week. <laughs> In seven days. <laughs> I thought, oh, because Kimo had his hand affected by the broken glass, so he couldn't steer it. So I went. After that, I was there for 10 years, then finally I said, I'm out of here. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean thing about a Malo, who we spend there? And everybody would look in the canoe and say, you guys got to be crazy. They had patches with the plywood ribs all in the canoe. And the reason why that happened, they had a race in McFarland Mac one year. And we uh, kind of get out. And I guess I wasn't there. But rabbit went over that way, he's supposed to go at an angle. But he went straight up down, he came down, three pieces he split <laughs> right in half. But this cup and I they put it together, but they used it plywood. Well that's the last time I used it, but you know I was I was surprised but you couldn't be on a surfing surfing wave. It just it just not, I don't know it's like a fish. It just because when he asked that boat he asked me, where's rabbit? I said He's down there. He's showing the swell, 15, 20 foot swell. He's down in the trough there. And he said, where's Rabbit? And, and you're down in the swamp, and he's up. And that so he's up, down, and up, down. So, so the last time I paddled in 75, oh. I never did really ride a dog, just, just the water high reach. Okay. Aloha. Aloha, go. Well, the only history I'm going to talk about is what, if you look on the left side, there's uh, some pictures of all my uncles and the story I heard of this canoe. And that canoe, from, mostly from Anakala, Walter Paulo. He had so much stories in his mind that he could really talk about the canoe, what had happened, and all the family who paddled. So, uh, 1936, this canoe went to Honolulu, and my grandpa John D kept the canoe there because Middle Lee was closing down. But unfortunately, I want to honor. He's my idol. He's my coach. He gave me so much fun about canoe. Maybe it was in my blood that I stick with canoe all my life. But Nappy was uh, my coach and Baby Bell. Unfortunately, my two coaches from Surf Club, I went to go to Heilani and Baby Bell. You know what I mean? I supposed to paddle Huinalo because my uncle said, you know, belong in no club but Huinalo. But because my friend Blue Makua, I never did go. But anyway, the spirit was still there no matter why I was. So I want to just uh, honor Uncle Anakala Walter Paolo. If he was here, he would tell you a life of this canoe mm. and also that canoe. So I want to honor, honor the Kupunas who had started this traditional land. Hopefully we get our next generation to continue and move in the positive way of having the, a club in the community. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you.